Chapter 7 Cold. So cold. Peacemaker thought as he trudged through the near endless tundra. Having lived his entire life in the rainforest, for the most part warm and humid, Peacemaker found it hard to understand how anyone could live out in the snow, frozen to the bone and sore every moment of every day. There was also snowflakes. How could you see through a seemingly endless supply of them as they flew into your face and eyes? The ice wings, of course, came another thought in Peacemaker's mind. Well, the ice wings were another story entirely, he realized. After all, it was in their name, Ice Wing. Still, he would have liked it if the blizzard he was currently in would let up. But it seemed nature was fine with ignoring him. Ignoring the cold the best he could do in kind, Peacemaker wrapped his wings around himself in a largely futile attempt to keep warm, hoping he would find his destination soon, wherever that destination was. The sound of wing beats above him caused Peacemaker's head to snap up in order to look up in the sky, seeing three dragon shapes in the distance behind him, soaring through the blizzard effortlessly like they knew exactly what they were doing. Closely inspecting the dragons, Peacemaker could make out white and silver scales on the dragons. Ice wings, of course. They've lived in this environment, Peacemaker thought. Raising his wings up, Peacemaker made an attempt to wave at them, but the dragons seemed to ignore him. The closer they flew towards him, with no sign of stopping, however, he could make out that something was wrong with one of the ice wings. He was in the air, but his wings were not beating. Just as the ice wings flew over him, that's when Peacemaker realized what was wrong. Two of the ice wings were carrying the third, while said Icewing was hanging loosely in the air, wings drooped. He looked worse for wear. This was only confirmed when he heard the weakened dragon cough, and dark blue Icewing blood fell onto the snow-covered ground in front of Peacemaker, briefly making the Nightwing-Rainwing hybrid flinch at the sight. Poor dragon, Peacemaker thought taking a step forward around the splatter of Icewing blood and trotting in the direction the Icewings flew. And then, in an instant, his surroundings completely changed. Peacemaker was once in the tundra, and now he was in a city. A city covered in snow that rested below a magnificent palace of ice. He was in the Kingdom of Ice. But how? When? The sound of talons clicking against the ground snapped Peacemaker from his thoughts, causing him to look behind him and see two ice wings running towards him. Peacemaker was about to raise his wings in front of him to wave the two dragons to stop, anticipating them to smash into him. It never happened, as the dragons went right through Peacemaker and continued on their way. A dream, of course, Peacemaker realized now. It suddenly made sense. But if he was aware that he was dreaming, and he knew he was because he knew he had been in the academy when he went to bed, did that mean he could control the dream? Tapping his talent on the ground, Peacemaker thought about what he could do. Until he remembered the ice wing that did not look well. Then, in a blink of an eye, his surroundings changed again, and he wished they had not. Peacemaker stood before a mass grave of ice wings. All lay in the snow, either buried or about to be. Gasping for air, Peacemaker felt like he wanted to be sick upon realizing the question he had been answered. The ice wing he saw that was sick had died and was with the many other ice wings waiting to be buried. Such a waste, a voice whispered behind him, 
a voice that sounded too familiar, yet so foreign to him at the same time. Spinning around, crouched, Peacemaker attempted to face the voice, whoever it belonged to. What? He found no one. They deserved it, came another voice, but this one, Peacemaker recognized. It was his own voice. What twisted logic you have. Justice. Is that what you call it? For everything they did. Even the little ones? Stop. No. Peacemaker's heart raced as the voice in his head and his own voice, against his own accord, argued. Clutching his head, Peacemaker fell to the snow, digging his talons into his scales, threatening to drop blood. The voices scared him, but not as scared as what he was feeling at seeing the many icewing bodies. He... He felt pride. Pride, knowing that every single one of them was dead. You disgust me. Stop it! Peacemaker sobbed, confused and frightened. I did what had to be done. Peacemaker's voice came again. The pride in his chest returned, but conflicted with how sick he felt. Stop it! Peacemaker screamed out into the air, effectively silencing the argument. And then, he felt wet. Yeah! Peacemaker shouted as he felt water splash all over him. Quickly standing up to his feet, teeth bared, crouched down and alert, Peacemaker was met with Cliff looking at him from his place near the shore of the Academy's underground lake, with wide eyes and wings held up in a pacifying manner upon seeing Peacemaker's aggressive stance. Seeing his friend's surprised reaction, Peacemaker slowly lowered his stance and sat down on the ground, while giving Cliff an apologetic look. Cliff, Peacemaker said, looking at the ground beneath him, damp. Sorry. Cliff slowly came out of the water, looking at him apologetically as well. I should apologize, Cliff admitted. Class is about to start, and, well, I wanted to wake you up before I headed to Clay's self-defense class. Wait, he had slept through his winglet's entire break? Looking behind him, he saw Tempest, Jaguar, Hyena, and Alligator walking away from the shoreline they had been on, talking as they made their way to their next class. Realizing he had missed out on a possibly interesting conversation, Peacemaker felt terrible about sleeping for most of the break instead of interacting with his winglet. He still had a few hours of break time, but most of his winglet would be going to class. Of course, he was not the only one who had a break. Ermine, who sat a bit away from the rest of the winglet, reading, had a study break before her and Peacemaker's last class of the day. But in the middle of the week, when they had this kind of schedule, Ermine always kept her distance, doing her work and not wanting to be disturbed by anyone. A tap on his shoulder made Peacemaker look back at Cliff, who approached his side. You sleep okay, Peace? Cliff asked. You seemed real into it. Peacemaker nodded. I, uh, it was a lucid dream, Peacemaker said. This was true, but... Not in a good way. Really? Cliff said, eyes widening with interest. What was it about? Peacemaker shook his head. Can't remember. I just know I was in control. Peacemaker said, lying about that part as he vaguely recalled the mass grave of ice wings. Well? Cliff said, smiling. Hope you remember because I'm curious. Please forget about it, Cliff, P 
Peacemaker thought to himself, really hoping his friend did not ask for details. Hey, your highness! Jaguar called out, his voice filled with annoyance. Three minutes to get from here to Clay's class! All right, all right! Cliff snapped back. I'm coming! Looking back at Peacemaker, he continued. See you in a bit. See you. Peacemaker nodded with a smile as his classmate bounded over to Jaguar. As the others left, Peacemaker turned to Ermine's direction, noticing that she had her head raised, speaking with Tempest. Not surprising, since Ermine always took time out of her day to speak with the Sea-Wing. As Tempest turned to leave, her eyes fell on Peacemaker, who gave him a smile and silently gestured over to Ermine. And, like that, it was only him and the Icewing in the cave. Taking a deep breath, Peacemaker figured it was best he tried to break the ice with Ermine after spending almost half the first part of the term not speaking with her much. Break the ice. Peacemaker shook his head at the mental pun he had made, silently glad he did not say it out loud. As he made his way towards Ermine, the Icewing rose her head from her scroll she was reading, her ice-blue eyes looking into his own, almost uninterested. I need some help with the project, Ermine spoke first, rather quick, shocking Peacemaker that she had initiated a conversation with him first, while it had always been him who had tried and mostly failed, to start conversations with the Icewing. It is geography related, so I figured I could use your help for it. After all, you do live in the rainforest. This made Peacemaker smile a little at the offer. She actually wanted his help. Sure, I'll help. Peacemaker answered, maybe a little too enthusiastically, as Ermine rose a brow at him after he spoke. Lowering his enthusiasm just a little, he continued. Where do you want to work? One of the study caves I normally use should be available, Ermine replied, as she stood up after placing her scrolls back into her bag. Hopefully, we should have some peace and quiet. Well, I can provide the peace, he said, giving a small grin at his pun, which caused Ermine to shake her head as she walked by him. Peacemaker felt his wings fall to his sides and silently scolded himself for making a pun. Walking with Ermine through the halls of the academy towards their desired location was, needless to say, very quiet. Ermine made no attempt at conversation, nor did she glance at Peacemaker while they walked. She was just entirely focused on the goal ahead of her. She seemed dead set on just getting to the destination without having to converse with him. He noticed that Ermine almost singled him out with her attitude when the wing was together. She always tried to avoid him. He understood the centuries-old rivalry between the Icewing and Nightwing tribes could not dissolve within seven years, but he did see that the Icewing and Nightwing students in the academy at least got along enough to work together. Some even could be considered friends. While not interacting much with many of the Icewings from the other winglets, Peacemaker did know that the others were much more sociable to Ermine. Even Stoat, who Ermine spent the most time with other than Tempest, socialized much more with dragons within his winglet. Why Ermine would be so distant and focused on her work, Peacemaker could only guess. He wanted to ask what, in particular, she had against him. There were times he wanted to ask Tempest, but whenever he felt he had the chance, she'd be around Ermine in earshot. Right now, working with Ermine one-on-one, -on -one, Peacemaker hoped he could at least establish regular dialogue with her. When they entered the study cave, Peacemaker heard Ermine groan upon finding out that the cave was not empty as she had hoped. Sitting in one corner of the study cave was Stoat, with a pile of papers covered in arithmetic. After hearing Peacemaker and Ermine come in, the ice wing from the Jade Winglet looked up, and his expression visibly perked up. Erm... Stoat suddenly paused, noticing Peacemaker before his expression turned formal as he looked back at Ermine. I mean, sister, 
It's good to see you. Peacemaker blinked upon hearing this. Ermine and Stoat were siblings? Actually, that made a lot of sense. Ermine and Stoat. Same animals, but different coats. Not to mention, there was the fact that they had similar blue scale patterns over their predominantly white scales and almost always spent time with each other. How he was not able to realize the two were siblings made him want to slap himself in the forehead. Upon hearing her brother's greeting, Peacemaker noticed Ermine give a genuinely warm smile, one that he had not seen even when she spoke with Tempest. Hello, brother. Ermine spoke formally, walking up to one of the papers Stoat had been working on. She picked up one and examined it. Your equations are accurate. She paused as she handed it back. But you may need to fix one of your measurements. Stoat raised a brow at his sister, looking at the paper. While I appreciate the feedback, I went over this one three times, Ermine, he answered. Peacemaker could have sworn that Stoat flashed the hint of a smile at his sister, but it was too quick for him to catch. After all, mathematics is my area of expertise, while history is yours. Ermine shook her head, though the way she did it was filled with mirth rather than disrespect towards her brother. If you say so, little brother, Ermine answered, almost amused. Stoat's gaze slowly fell on Peacemaker after a moment of silence between him and his sister, and then looked back at Ermine with a raised brow. Standing, Stoat walked up to Peacemaker, making him feel a little nervous, mostly because of the revelation that Stoat was Ermine's brother, and also how he never spoke with Stoat before. Peacemaker, right? He asked, which Peacemaker affirmed with a nod. Nice to meet you. I'm Stoat, Ermine's little brother. Glancing back at his sister, Stoat leaned forward and proceeded to whisper to Peacemaker. You'll get used to it. She's not that bad. I heard that, Stoat. Ermine spoke sternly, though Stoat casually shrugged his wings. If you don't mind, we have some work that needs to be done. Is there any chance we could work on our project in silence? Very well. Stoat replied, sighing. I am finished with mine, after all. The you might need to hurry. The gold wing that might come in when the class is done. Noted, Stoat, Ermine said, as she set her bag on a table and began to take out its contents. As Stoat moved to leave, Peacemaker spoke. Nice to meet you, Stoat. At this, the Icewing looked back and gave a short wave of his wing, before leaving the cave. Turning to the table Ermine had chosen, Peacemaker placed his bag on it and pulled out some parchment and his inkwell. Your brother seems nice, Peacemaker said, trying to start a conversation. His attempts were in luck, as Ermine looked at him. He is, Ermine said, opening her inkwell and putting her white index talon into it. He can be informal. After saying this, she gave the softest hint of a smile. But he is my brother. Even if he can be difficult at home, especially when he disagrees with the function of the circles. But you said you were against the circles too, right? Peacemaker asked, raising a brow, remembering that first day of school when Ermine revealed her views on the current state of the Ice Kingdom aristocracy. You are right, I did. Ermine answered, while her tone dropped with a hint of annoyance at his question. But I also said that the circles do not have to go completely. They need to change. Be something that does not just benefit royalty, but everyone as a whole. She paused, her talent still in the inkwell, which she pulled out and started to write. Sturt feels the same way, but he is much more verbal in his dislike. Guess... He gets into trouble because of that? Peacemaker asked as he opened a scroll, specifically one focusing on the geographic boundaries of the Mud Kingdom and Rainforest. Ermine nodded in response to his question. Only reason he does not get into too much trouble is because of his ranking in the circles. Ermine explained. He currently rests in the third circle close to first place. 
while he frustrates others in the nobility, Stuart legally cannot be dropped down simply because he annoys the nobility. As she spoke, Peacemaker noticed that there was a certain amount of pride in Ermine's tone. Almost like, despite how much trouble he could get in, Ermine admired the courage Stoat had to voice disapproval at adult nobles. If Stoat voices his disapproval about the circles, what do you do? Peacemaker asked, curious about the differences between the siblings. Simple. I constantly question the adults, Ermine said, putting her work down in order to look at him. When someone asks a lot of questions, you start to make them think. When you make them think, in turn, they start questioning the norms. Her gaze looked at Peacemaker's work in front of him. Sometimes, the number of questions can annoy those dragons. That certainly explained what Tempest meant back when he first met her and Ermine. How Ermine made Icewing Spikes rattle with frustration from the sheer amount of questions she asked and not simply going along with the norms of the aristocracy. What caused her to be against the circles? Peacemaker wondered. Before he could ask, however, he realized why Ermine might have said that asking too many questions annoyed dragons. That's when he knew that she wanted to get back to work and not have him asking questions. Her gaze, while hostile, certainly showed Ermine was not interested in talking while they needed to get work done. Without a word, Peacemaker went back to his scrolls in front of him, dipping his index talent into an inkwell in order to start writing information on it. Ermine did the same, eagerly getting back to work. The silence between the two of them was long, and, for the lack of a better term on Peacemaker's part, cold. The only noises that could be heard in the cave were talents scrawling across parchment, and distant echoes from the various caves of the academy. Even though Peacemaker focused on his work, multiple times he caught himself glancing in Ermine's direction, as she scribbled away on her parchment with almost all of her focus on her own work. While Peacemaker could do his work, he did feel uncomfortable working with her, especially after her last comment was directed at him. He began to wonder if he should even be sitting across from her. What is it? Ermine spoke, suddenly causing Peacemaker to hesitate when she spoke to him. When he did not answer her, she looked back up at him. Peacemaker, you've been looking up at me several times. What is it? Peacemaker hesitated, not wanting to annoy her further, but he decided to speak anyways. Do you... hate Nightwings? Peacemaker asked, slowly, afraid he would offend Ermine. This made Ermine pause. Her expression seemed bewildered at the question. I mean, just whenever we're around each other, you just seem to want me to be on the opposite side of the room. Peacemaker said, trying not to sound rude. If there's anything I'm doing that bothers you, I can... Peacemaker, stop! Ermine interrupted, reaching out with one of her talons and placed them over his, her cold scales causing him to pause. Just stop! I'm sorry, Peacemaker said, lowering his head, embarrassed. And stop apologizing, Ermine added, causing him to stay quiet. No, I don't hate you. Nor do I hate Nightwings, she said, causing him to feel some relief at hearing this. I have a history with your tribe, and I do not particularly like specific members, but I do not hate Nightwings for what the few have done to my family. Pacemaker's head perked at hearing the last part of her statement. Her family? What had certain Nightwings done to Ermine's family? Most likely, seeing the questions all over his face, Ermine looked down at the ground. Just know that I do not think poorly of you, Peacemaker, she said, her voice sincere. It is strange working with a Nightwing. I will not deny that, but I will not let my past experiences get in the way. Looking up, Peacemaker saw her blue eyes soften. To be honest... I appreciate you keeping Cliff and Jaguar away from each other's throats as they go through their banters. 
This made Peacemaker smile. Thank you, Ermine, Peacemaker said, appreciatively. After he had said that, Ermine looked at his paper and frowned. I do advise focusing on Queen Anaconda's social policies, she said, suddenly going back into her formal tone. Domestic policies of a kingdom are just as important as their policies against their enemies. Oh, okay. Peacemaker nodded, looking back down to his parchment, but paused for a moment as he looked up at the ice wing. And Ermine? He said, catching her attention once more. I think you're a hard worker. And pretty smart. For a fraction of a second, Peacemaker could have sworn he saw the faintest hint of a smile cross Ermine's lips. But she had lowered her head in order to focus back on her work. Thank you, Peacemaker, she said, before going back to whatever it was she had been writing. Afterward, the two worked in silence. But, unlike before, Peacemaker felt at ease knowing that Ermine respected him, and that, while it would take time, the path to form some form of friendship with the Icewing was not closed to him. When the corn swinglet gathered in the common cave for the evening, Cliff and Jaguar were, as Ermine had accurately put it in the study cave, at each other's throats again. You were supposed to let me block it! Jaguar growled as he trailed after Cliff around the cave, while the scrambling prince was grabbing himself a drink from a pitcher of juice. And I told you to be faster! Cliff countered as he took a drink from his cup. Bandits aren't going to wait for you to block their attacks, Jaguar! It was supposed to be practice! And you were not paying attention, Jaguar! Can you two please knock it off? came a hyena's voice, as she and Alligator looked up from the game of scales and squares, the actual game. You two are acting like an angry couple, and not the cute kind. The Sandwing's words instantly shut down any attempts by Jaguar and Cliff to make a rebuttal of what Hyena had just told them. Peacemaker actually had to stifle a laugh as he sat beside Tempest near the fire pit. The Sea Wing smiled at Hyena's comment and the reactions of Jaguar and Cliff and it looked like she would have laughed alongside Peacemaker. Sure enough, Jaguar and Cliff's argument had ended, albeit the two were now in different caves. Jaguar gave a fake yawn and said he was going to bed, while Cliff insisted that he had some reading to catch up on. In turn, Peace had, relatively, returned to the common cave as the members of the quartz winglet went about their evening. While Hyena and Alligator were intently focused on their game, Peacemaker and Tempest were busy reading scrolls. While Peacemaker read The Tale of the Blizzard Wings, a story about a group of dragons, almost like a winglet, traveling a fictional continent, Peacemaker noticed from his peripheral vision that Tempest was reading her scrolls far more intently. Curiosity besting him, Peacemaker looked at the sea wing. What are you reading? He asked, genuinely curious. For a moment, Tempest did not answer him, and he doubted she had heard him. But then her head raised up, and she blinked, confused. I'm sorry? Tempest replied. Your scroll, Peacemaker clarified, gesturing to the parchment in front of her. Is it a story? Tempest looked back at the scroll and shook her head. No, she answered, holding the scroll up in her talons. It's a letter. For my mother back home. Peacemaker made a silent O oh with his mouth when she said that, and for a moment he felt bad about prying into her personal life, though Tempest waved off his concern. It's no trouble, Peacemaker, she said, rolling up her scroll as she tucked it into her bag. Just a status update. How is she? he asked, curious about Tempest's family life. A smile tugged on Tempest's lips as he asked this, followed by a chuckle. Let's just say, my brothers can be a handful when I'm not around keeping them out of trouble, Tempest explained as she ran her talons over her forehead. The youngest of the four came home with a terrifying scavenger in his talons, and he wanted to keep it as a pet. Mom said no, and when he let go, it was scrambling around the surface area of our house, 
not before getting some of our food in the process. I hope he's not in trouble, Peacemaker said, thinking back to the court's woman's pursuit of the scavenger that stole a part of their project a few weeks ago, and the chaos that had ensued. He was just glad that Tsunami had not made cleaning up the prey center the court's winglet's permanent duty. He won't be fishing for a few days, that's for certain, Tempest replied. Before Peacemaker went back to his own scroll, she continued, How was working with Ermine? This made Peacemaker raise a brow at the sea wing. He had yet to tell anyone else in the winglet that he had worked with Ermine during the break. Ermine certainly had said nothing to anyone either. When the last class period had ended, Ermine had gone straight to work when the winglet gathered in their common cave. Then, Peacemaker remembered something. Ermine and Tempest had been conversing just before the latter left for her class. Come to think of it, when he saw the two, Ermine almost looked reluctant as she spoke to Tempest about whatever it was they discussed. You wanted Ermine to ask for my help with the project? Peacemaker realized. The smile from Tempest confirmed this. I felt it would be a good way to get Ermine out of her shell, Tempest said with a shrug, looking towards the sleeping cave that she and Ermine used. She can be distant and focused, but when you know her, she is a nice person. She is, Peacemaker agreed, thinking back to her interactions with Stoat and how she had complimented him after their discussion. Thinking back to what they spoke about, how Ermine said the Nightwings had wronged her, did make him curious, even if she had told Peacemaker she would not let that affect her interactions with him. He knew he should not ask this next question, but he did anyways. When we spoke, Peacemaker began, pausing for a moment to collect his thoughts and how exactly he wanted to phrase his question. Ermine said, that Nightwings had done something to her family. When he said this, Tempest's aqua-colored eyes looked at his with sadness. Clearly, she was aware of what he was about to ask. What did my tribe do to her? Tempest's gaze fell on the stone floor of the common cave. Her expression was muted while she visibly contemplated what she wanted to say next. For a moment, she looked as if she wanted to walk away and ignore the question Peacemaker asked entirely. He even started to regret asking that question. Then, after several moments of silence, Tempest looked up at him. How much do you know about the plague that ravaged the Icewing tribe? Tempest asked him. Peacemaker and the other Nightwing Dragonettes rarely heard much about Darkstalker's brief, but almost destructive, reign as king of the Nightwing tribe. Whenever Peacemaker had asked his mother or other Nightwing adults who had joined Darkstalker, the topic was always changed immediately. Hope, despite not having joined Darkstalker, nor had been officially active in the Nightwing tribe during the time, always kept a tight lip about the actions of the many Nightwings who followed the Animus Dragon and had taken part in the Battle of Jade Mountain. One of the topics the adults did not want to talk about in particular was the plague Darkstalker had caused. That had killed many Icewings and had stirred them up into war, fighting against the Nightwings. Other than the number of Icewing deaths and Kibli's actions in stopping the plague, Peacemaker did not know the exact details that occurred within the Ice Kingdom. Only that Darkstalker caused it, Peacemaker said. And Kibley managed to stop it by replicating his animus-touched earring. Tempest nodded at what Peacemaker said. That is correct, Tempest said. Do the Nightwings discuss how the plague even affected the Icewing hatcheries? Peacemaker shook his head, but already... He felt the back of his throat grow cold when he realized where this was heading, even before Tempest spoke. Ermine and Stoat were in a clutch of three eggs, Tempest answered sadly. Ermine hatched first, a few weeks before Darkstalker awoke. 
Stoat, and their youngest brother, Weasel, were hatched when the plague was at its worst. Peacemaker's eyes widened upon hearing this, realizing what Ermine meant. Never once had he considered the effects the plague had on young Ice Wings. Learning that Ermine and Stoat had another brother made him close his eyes, already aware of what had happened to their brother, Weasel. Their brother? Peacemaker began, but could not finish. Tempest nodded, sadly. The plague took him. Just mere hours before Kibli's earrings could be distributed to Ermine's family. I... Peacemaker said, his heart feeling heavy. I'm sorry. Tempest shook her head. It's not your fault, Peacemaker. Tempest answered, gesturing towards her and Ermine's sleeping cave. And Ermine knows that too. She knows you, nor your tribe, had anything to do with Darkstalker's plague. In the end, he paid for his crimes. Despite hearing Tempest say this, Peacemaker felt the heaviness in his heart only grow stronger. He knew he had no talon in the deaths of the Ice Wings. He was only a dragonette when that happened. But still, the thought that someone from his tribe could commit something so evil, it almost made Peacemaker feel sick to his stomach. Suddenly, his eyes were starting to grow tired. He needed to sleep. Rubbing his talons over his eyelids, Peacemaker stood up. Thanks, Tempest, Peacemaker said to his seaman clawmate, who looked at him sympathetically. I appreciate you telling me this about Ermine. At least I know. Peacemaker, Tempest said. He felt their talons touch his own, causing him to feel a warmth across his body. Give her time. Peacemaker nodded, a yawn escaping his mouth. I will, he said, turning to enter his, Jaguar, and Cliff's sleeping cave. All the while, he struggled to hold back the sick feeling in his stomach. The familiar chill that seeped through Peacemaker scales was what told him that he was in a dream. It was the same cold that filled his body when his dreams took him to the tundra of the Ice Kingdom. But, unlike the dream before, this one was in the middle of a hallway carved out of ice. Was he in the palace of Queen Snowfall? If he was, he would not deny how amazing it was that the entire palace was carved out of ice. But before he could fully marvel at his environment, Peacemaker heard the noise of towns clicking against the icy floor of the hallway. Turning in the direction, he was met with three ice wings running for a destination behind him. Like the dream before, the ice wings ran straight through him and towards their destination. Which one? Peacemaker heard one of the ice wings, a female, speak. Her voice calm, but underneath there was a hint of dread. The youngest one, answered one of the ice wings. Youngest one? What youngest one? Peacemaker heard a cough from one of the ice wings, and the sound of blood hitting the floor. Peacemaker's eyes widened in realization as he realized what was happening, and where the ice wings were likely headed. The ice wing hatchery. Bolting into a run, Peacemaker bounded after the ice wings, intending to keep up with them. After two bounds with his legs, his entire environment had changed, and he was in darkness. Do you still think they deserved it? A voice spoke in the back of Peacemaker's mind, almost like a snake hissing in his ear. Hearing these words, Peacemaker fell to the ground, his entire body giving away as he felt his stomach grow sick. The sound of talons clicking on the ground behind him could be heard, but Peacemaker did not turn to look. Instead, he covered his ears with both of his forefeet, closing his eyes tightly. He feared what he would see next, and already 
he regretted moving from his spot to follow the ice wings. Embrace it! The voice in his mind spoke. The cold returned, slowly. Peacemaker's eyes opened. All around him, darkness was present. But only a few feet from him, Peacemaker saw an ice wing dragonette, only a few months old, laying on the ground, curled beside two smaller dragonettes. Tears flooding his eyes, Peacemaker uncovered his ears. He heard a small whimper from the oldest dragonette, followed by coughing from another. Standing up, he walked over to the dragonettes, tears streaming from his eyes as he drew closer. Staring down at the three, Peacemaker's heart fell when he saw that one of the younger dragonettes lay on the ground, motionless, his breathing non-existent. Enough! The older Icewing Dragonette suddenly rose her head, looking up at Peacemaker with a pair of cold blue eyes. To his horror, he recognized the eyes and the blue patterns over her predominantly white scales. They were ermines. The Dragonette rose to her feet, and, as she did, her body morphed into that of a seven-year-old. Murderer! Ermine hissed, her eyes glaring at Peacemaker, making his body run cold. Murderer! Peacemaker's throat constricted, his voice unable to leave his throat. Before he could speak, the ice wing roared and lunged at him, serrated claws aimed at his throat. When Peacemaker awoke, he found himself on the floor of the sleeping cave, his body having rolled off of his bed while he had been sleeping. The noise of his body hitting the ground had stirred awake Cliff, but his sleeping platform was not far from Peacemaker's own. When the Skywing's head raised, and his eyes groggily opening to see him on the ground, the Skywing Prince widened his eyes in shock at seeing Peacemaker on the floor. Peace? Cliff whispered, yawning slightly as he stood up despite his body wobbling for a moment, made his way over to Peacemaker, using one of his wings to help him stand. Why are you on the floor? Peacemaker wanted to answer his claw mate, but he remembered the nightmare. This time, the dream was different than before. Before, the nightmares had been filled with the unfamiliar ice wing and angry voices. But this time, the dream was of someone he knew, Ermine. Just thinking of the nightmare made him dread closing his eyes, fearing he would see Ermine or anyone else he knew in his dreams looking at him with the anger he saw in his dream. Peacemaker, the Skywing Prince spoke, his voice low and stern. What's wrong? Realizing he needed to answer Cliff, Peacemaker sighed. It was a bad dream. Peacemaker answered. When he said this, Cliff looked at him sympathetically. What was it? Cliff asked. I... As he thought about the dream, how scary it was. Peacemaker shivered every time he recalled the images. I was in the Ice Kingdom when the plague happened. This answer made Cliff nod. It seemed that he had guessed what he had seen in the dreams. But, Peacemaker doubted he knew the exact details. Nor did he want to go into the details with Cliff. He did not need to recall the furious glare Ermine gave him in the dream. You want to talk about it? Cliff asked, placing a wing over Peacemaker's shoulder. Shaking his head, Peacemaker gave Cliff his answer. Despite appearing concerned for him, the Skywing Prince ultimately nodded in understanding. We'll talk about it in the morning, okay? Cliff offered. At this, Peacemaker nodded, though he hoped that he would forget. As both returned to bed, Peacemaker curled up on a sleeping platform, making sure his back was turned on his clawmate, whom he could feel was staring at him from his own platform. The night would continue to go on like this, 
While the sleeping cave was filled with the low breathing of the three resting dragons, deep down in Peacemaker's thoughts, he recalled the dreams of the Ice Kingdom and how vivid they were. Dreaming about the dead Icewing was terrifying, but seeing a dream of young Ermine crying over her brother, that was worse. As his mind continued to draw towards the nightmare, Peacemaker curled up tightly, covering his head with his talons, silently pleading for the images in his head to cease, somehow, so he could sleep in peace. Shh. Peacemaker's mind suddenly grew cloudy as he heard the noise in the back of his mind, not unlike the voice he had heard in his dream, but unlike the sensation of the nightmares he had. The noise he heard made him feel warm, his body feeling peaceful and heavy as his eyelids began to close. He was not sure if he actually heard this, but he heard another whisper in his mind. Sleep. As the whisper commanded, Peacemaker drifted into a dreamless sleep.